Welcome to this demo. So what I'd like to do is show you how to determine the domain of a function using interval notation. So for this video, basically what I'm going to focus on two different functions where we have a restriction on our domain. Uh, the reciprocal or rational function as well as the square root function. So the main important thing we need to remember for these two functions is that dividing by zero is not going to be within the domain. So to kind of give you a non-mathematical version of that, we can just say it is bad because we know that um, we cannot divide by zero. And you might know that just in the, um, from, because it's been said over and over, but obviously I have other videos you know, explaining why that is the case. Um, also, we know that under the real number system, we cannot take the square root of a negative number. So therefore, for the square root function, um, any negative, square root of negative numbers is not within the domain. So we're also going to call those bad. So when we're identifying the domain, we want to find the good numbers, the numbers that can be evaluated into the function that are a part of the domain. And it really kind of depends on you know, what exactly the function uh, depends on what the function is as far as what those values are that make it good and that make it bad. But the kind of the thing that I've kind of done, the reason why I use that and not the so math, math notation is understanding dividing by zero is not within the domain. Just taking the square root of negative numbers is not within the domain. So I'm just going to call them bad because it's easier, I think, sometimes to remember them as bad. So um, basically, let's just go and take a look at some very basic functions. f of x equals 1 over x minus 3, and let's call this one g of x equals square root of x minus 3. Now, these two functions, we re recognize that here is a reciprocal and here is a square root. So the, the bad number can, can occur. So what we want to do is we want to be able to kind of determine where are those bad numbers and therefore not include them in, within the domain. So the only thing we know about the reciprocal function, the only thing I've messed, uh, the only thing I've, uh, blah, blah, I'm thinking, the only thing I have explained, I guess, so far, is losing my losing my train of thought, is that dividing by zero is bad. So what we want to do is we want to find the numbers, or find the number that is going to make the denominator equal to zero. So I'm using a very basic case, but this works for all reciprocal or rational functions to determine the domain, we want to find the values that um, are not going to be in the domain. Because it's a little bit easier, because we know that real numbers, there's infinite many real numbers, right? So rather than trying to find all the numbers that are in the domain, it's a lot easier to find the numbers that are not in the domain. So we know that any number that's going to make this 0 is not in the domain. So what we'll do is we'll say x minus 3 equal to 0, plus 3 plus 3, x equals 3. That means when I have 3 in for x, that makes my de denominator equal to 0, which we know is bad. Now, as far as understanding that for interval notation, um, basically what we're going to do is we're going to look at a number line. Now, this number line is going to represent all the real numbers in the world, right, or in the universe, everything that we're aware of. So we'll start you know, at 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, negative 1, negative 2. So this includes irrational numbers, you know, um, crazy. Um, rational numbers, whole, all numbers, everything. And if you look at this, the only number that we said is bad is 3. So I'm just going to put a little hole here. Every other number, though, 2 works. You know, 1 half works, right? You know, pi works, 4 works, negative, point one, uh, negative point one, 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 one works. All these numbers work except for 3. So to represent them all, uh, all working or be a part of the domain, I'm just going to kind of draw a nice little arrow in this way, arrow, arrow that way. Sometimes we go on the number line, you know, but to kind of distinguish the numbers I'm representing, um, I'm just going to go above the number line. So therefore, we realize that it's all real numbers except for the number zero. So in set notation, you know, we would basically re represent this um, as all real numbers x such that x cannot equal zero. I'm sorry, 3. Well, the, another way to look at this is saying, well, if we're going to continue this number line, how far are we going to go? Well, the lowest that we can go is to the concept of negative infinity. And we can go all the way to 3. We can get really, really close to 3, 2.9999999999, but not actually get to 3. And then on the other side of 3, we can go from 3 to the, identity, to the element of positive infinity. 
Now again, I'm using these uh, parentheses because one, identity, uh, infinity is not a number, so therefore it's not contained within the domain. And three, we obviously know is not contained in the domain because it makes the denominator zero. So therefore, we're going to use parentheses, meaning that it's not contained. Then um, we can leave it in interval notation, or we can um, also connect them for our interval notation. OK, uh, the next set here is going to be uh, square root of x minus 3. And now in this case, rather than trying to find the numbers that are not, that are going to be bad, I am actually, in this case, going to find the numbers that are just going to be good. What are all the values that are going to make the radical positive? So I know when x minus 3 is less than or equal to 0, is less than 0, sorry, is less than 0, that's bad. All the numbers that make that negative are bad. Well, I could find the bad and then find the good, or I could really just find the good, which would be x minus 3 has to be greater than or equal to 0. So now, all I got to do is solve x plus 3, or x plus 3. x has to be greater or equal to 3. Again, going to my number line, let's do 3 right here. So x is greater than or equal to 3. Greater than or equal to, that means 3 is now included. And um, three is, uh, x is greater than 3, so that means it's going to be all numbers, let's say 4, 5, you know, 2, 1. That's going to be all the numbers going to the right-hand side. So now, 3 is contained. So in interval notation, I'm going to use a bracket. So it's different than when it has a hole. The bracket's saying it's contained, so it's going to go from 3, comma, to infinity. Okay? Or I could also write this in as set, says so x, such that you know, x is greater than, greater than or equal to 3. Okay? So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how you um, write a, the domain of uh, two different functions using interval and set notation. Thanks.